Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the correct news. This is Sam I need Angie doing political commentary for the media speaks. Now there is only the one camera today. Uh, there are memory issues with the uh, other machine that we have. So Webcam, whatever quality it is, uh, I don't know, Google sucks, so you're, you're probably getting me through an abacus. Hey, I have a lot of serious news to get to today, but I, it, some of it is so depressing that I, I want to start it out with, uh, I wrote my very own joke. Here you go. What is the difference between Hillary Clinton and the Easter Bunny? The difference between Hillary Clinton and the Easter Bunny is that, unlike Hillary Clinton, the Easter Bunny showed up on Easter weekend. Yes, it's true for those of you that don't know. No, I, I'm either voting for Trump or Johnson, but I love it any time that Hillary Clinton gets destroyed. So uh, I'll tell you what. The uh, it, it's good news. Uh, she lost three states in a row over the weekend while you were celebrating Easter, as was I. Uh, Easter horror ISIS crucifies Catholic priest, uh, Father Tom Uzen Nalo. Nalo, um, almost sounds like nail, which is even more grim. Jim Hoft, Gateway Pundit. I'll say this. While I am Christian, I'll never be Catholic. I, there are a number of things that I do not agree with that they teach. But I'll say this. There are a lot of really good priests in the world. And I think, when, when I, myself included, when we all make jokes about the pedophilia problem that we're in the Catholic Church, I worry that we forget to know and to remember that there were, there are, in fact, I should say, a lot of good people who are also in the Catholic Church. The guitar player behind me painted on the glass in uh, the studios in Canton. Ohio. Zach Wilde is a uh, Catholic, I do believe. Well, there are a lot of good Catholics, good Catholic priests, who don't bother children who don't live immoral lives, who lives a lot better lives than I'll ever live. Well, one of those good men were unfortunately put to death in a despicable way. Uh, this is dated uh, 28th, uh, it's 418, almost 420 in the morning. So uh, it's, it's basically today for all intents and purposes, which is why I'm reporting on something that happened over the weekend. And man, this is what you hate doing on the show. Indian Catholic priest Father Tom Uzhanalala was kidnapped by ISIS gunmen in Yemen three weeks ago and was reportedly crucified on Good Friday. So basically, to quote Michael Savage, another man has died at the hands of the religion of peace. Or, for another way, the religion of peace has just killed a man. ISIS reportedly crucified captured Catholic priest Thomas Ushanalal on the Good Friday, as they promised. According to the Daily Mail, the I'm going to go ahead to screen share on this. We're not on any HDAP today. The Indian Catholic priest kidnapped by ISIS-like terrorists, says in Yemen earlier this month, was crucified on Good Friday. Uh, he was 56. He was taken by Islamist gunmen, reportedly linked to ISIS, uh, and attacked an old people's home in Aden, South Yemen. He killed at least 15 people on March 4th. I guess it'd be the 16th. So there you go, friends. Think about it. He was a, he was a father working in an old folks' home. My, my dad had uh, dreadful incontinence issues when uh, liver cancer took him out. And there were wonderful people that worked at this nursing home where we went by every day to see him till he died. Like we didn't put him in a nursing home like forget him or something. It was impossible for us to have a job and take care of him. And the people, and my point is, the people that worked there were wonderful, great people. This was one of those people, whether or not you're God-fearing or not, this is one of those people. It was reported last week that several religious groups had received threats that Father 
Thomas would be crucified on Good Friday, and it was denied by his church. The terrorists reportedly carried out the act, and this is according to uh, an Archbishop of Vienna. His church likely denied it. Uh, the, the more oppressed a terrorist gets, the more empowered they become and the more emboldened they'll be to do what they do and the less likely they are to change their mind. I'm not saying they're known for their great kindness. I'm saying that there are instances where prisoners have been let loose before when terrible things were promised to them. I think the church was uh, likely downplaying this in an effort to save the man's life. I don't think it was something done with a malicious intent. Kind of like um, when the Nazis came to take the Jews out of people's basements when they were hiding, they would oftentimes ask the owners of the house who was hiding the Jews if they had seen any Jews. They would have to lie. In that instance, is a Christian lying? I would argue no. Um, well, here you have... It looks like the church tried to err on the side of caution here. And um, again, it was to no avail, but they tried. Um, the Archbishop of Vienna, Christopher Cardinal Schlomborn, has said, the, told the congregation gathered in St. Stephen's Cathedral in, the, Cathedral in the Australian capital that the priest had been crucified. Uh, the wonderful religion of peace here, four nuns belonging to uh, the missionaries of charity, were murdered by Islamists earlier this month. The Islamists captured uh, Father Tom during that raid. They stormed the elderly home by Mother Teresa's missionaries of charity, and the Muslim killers tied up four nuns and 12 other, others and shot them in the head. Two of the four nuns slaughtered by the religion of peace gunmen at the retirement home run by the missionaries of charity, which, let me show this picture for you. This is where I think it goes beyond bad American policy. I do understand that bad American policy does invite evil into the country, but I don't care who funded them. I can give you a million dollars. Are you going to shoot a nun in the head? I don't care who funded you. If you're filth, you're filth. And these are the lowest of the low here. You shoot a nun in the head who is working at an old folks' home. What more needs to be said? Uh, we're going to move on to a bit lighter news before everybody either hits unsubscribe, logs off, or hangs themselves. New York.cbs.social.com. It's basically CBS. Man dressed as the Easter Bunny. Charged after Jersey Mall fight. Now, as depressing as the last story was, is going to be as enjoyable as, as this one is. I'm sorry, this is just funny. I'm going to show the video. If I don't talk over it, some, they're not going to let me. But this is so awesome. Are you ready? Are you ready? The Easter Brawl. I know we're not going to do Easter all show. Look at this. This is awesome. Like, I'm sorry. This is just hilarious. Easter Bunny versus the parent in the middle of the Newport Center Mall in Jersey City by 5 p.m. Sunday. Awesome. You got the Easter Bunny, like, in a fight. In Jersey City, New Jersey, a parent and a man dressed as the Easter Bunny were both charged Monday following a brawl this past weekend at a mall in New Jersey. Cassine Charles, 22, who was dressed as the Easter Bunny late Sunday afternoon at the Newport Center Mall in New Jersey City, Jersey City, and Juanez Jimenez Jacques Guerrero, 44, I'm great with foreign languages, were both charged with aggravated assault and disorderly conduct, police told CBS2. Charles and Jimenez Guerrero both had outstanding warrants. Ironically, Charles had a warrant for his arrest for fair hopping ha 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 police said it is true actually believe it or not cbs 2 steve langford reported the fight between the men broke out at 5 p.m sunday in the middle of the mall and i guess uh 
what could have been a, they had kids watching like the fight go down it's so funny uh they said it seems that the uh easter bunny may have uh, had a child fall off their lap on accident and the parents freaked out come on man if you're not laughing you know what then fine go listen to the first story again and hang yourself just because i reported on it doesn't mean i was happy to do so uh, moving on, we've got EAG news as Victor Skinner student loan defaults hit $121 billion. That's 40% of all borrowers are, borrowers are not making payments. That's even worse than I thought because I am painfully behind on student loans and will be for the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> barring a miracle. Uh, I got my degree. I have a degree in IMT, uh, internet media technology, sound production. I'm a DJ for a living. I know how to do lights. I know web design. That doesn't mean I'm a hardcore programmer, but I know design and layout. I'm a Photoshop wizard, Adobe Premiere video editing, blah, 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 blah. I got my degree. But it, you see, they do something. They do something with the student loans. And this is the way it happened to me. Now, there are ways that it happens to other people. I don't discount that. But here's how the student loan system screwed me over. When I graduated from college, there were no jobs. First of all, they moved all the jobs overseas. So there was really not anybody that makes websites here for a living very often anymore. If they do, it's a mom and pop shop and they're not hiring anyone. Uh, you can open your own mom and pop shop, but at this point, they're sort of already rooted in. Um, basically, most of my major was being outsourced while I was in it. But um, I, got, I got the degree, whatever. When I was going through a separation that led to a divorce, I've been married twice. I'm married now, my first wife. Um, I moved and forgot to change my address during the fiasco that was our ending. And um, they drilled me. I missed a couple of payments. It wasn't even six months. They said six months, my ass. It shot through the roof. Insane, insane. I called them and asked to have the money the, the payment that I, the agreement that I had had before, because I was able to keep up with that. No, absolutely not. I asked for an extension because I had gotten one prior. No, absolutely not. So now they're trying, I mean, this is like a loan sharking here, the amount of money that they're asking from me. So I'm sending them something every month. It's not what they want and they're not going to get it either, but I'm doing my best point is, this isn't what all of this was supposed to be about. This isn't helping anybody. This is hurting people in droves. And here's the story of some other people that have been loan sharked to death by this. Federal student loan defaults have hit an astounding $121 billion, with about 40% of all borrowers not currently making any payments, according to a government report. Maybe if you could get the deal that you were originally given, even if something happens that derails you. I mean, even the, even the incredibly corrupt banks, mega banks, will usually work with you and uh, oftentimes give you your original agreement. Something has come up that has derailed you. No, no, not this racket. Um, it said, this is a slow-moving disaster, Jason Dizel, director of the Federal Education Budget Project at New America, told Detroit Free Press. Why are there no hearings on Capitol Hill? Why isn't the administration talking about it more? The U.S. Department of Education highlighted the report in a self-congratulatory news release about an increase in the number of students who are enrolling in income-based repayment programs. In December, it says of 2015, there were 4.6 million borrowers using income-based repayment plans, which presents a 48% increase. Um, 
It suggests that the administration's efforts to help struggling borrowers are having a positive impact. Maybe if they wouldn't deliberately double or triple what you owe because you fall behind. Um, this is ridiculous. They, they, when you fall behind, you're obviously having trouble. And by doing this, you're guaranteeing that you're not going to be a priority on the repayment here. What you're doing is wiping people out. Um, it just astounds me to see this. Uh, today's uh, analysis is horrible, I would say. Detroit 26-year-old Gail Vinseco told the news site a divorce forced her to quit cosmetolo cosmetolo cosmetology school, if I can talk, to care for her two children. And it's been nearly a year since she made a payment on her school loan. And one to pay, other things are a priority now. Monseco is now in default, a category reserved for borrowers who do not make a payment for more than 270 days. Um, and she'll never be able to ever get any kind of decent agreement from them. They're like heathens and wolves or once something like they like they are, even the mega banks, like I said, are not this cruel. You usually sometimes we've reported on it, but not always. Not even usually, I don't think. 20% of all federal load borrowers have defaulted on their loans, according to a new data. Well, let me tell you what. Maybe Trump is on to something here. If you don't like Trump, then maybe the people that have wisely warned us for quite some time that NAFTA is a bad idea, that um, the lie that we call free trade, it's like calling blue-red, um, is not a good idea. Maybe it's not a wise idea to send our jobs to other countries who will do the work for slave wages while our economy stagnates and dies. Maybe that's not hateful. Maybe that's just common sense. Maybe we should drill for our oil and refine it in our own country as safely as we can. Maybe we should print our own money separate from the Federal Reserve. I mean, the government, not like you in your basement. Um, maybe it would be wise to build and make and create things here in our country so that when people go to school to better themselves, there is something waiting for them on the other end. I know it's a genius idea. Really, friends, do me a favor. Look at your screen, and what you're going to see when you do is stick with Jonathan. You're also going to see that we've got like three more stories to get to that you're going to love. The reason I'm talking about sticker junkie is because you're going to get your stickers and they're going to look amazing, like all of these do here. For those of you listening and not watching, uh, who would want to watch me for long, I don't blame you. If you go ahead and make your stickers and when you check out, tell them. And type in the correct views or correct views, either one. You're going to find that you get an amazing deal. Because not only is Sticker Junkie the king of awesome stickers, they're also a supporter of the show, a supporter of Liberty, and somebody you're going to want to show your support to. Friends, economic collapse, Michael Snyder. A little bit of good news for everybody. I'm going to stay on screen share for just Michael Snyder, and why investing in silver is vastly superior to investing in gold right now. This is interesting. I hope it's true because I have uh, more silver, allegedly, than I do gold. When panic and fear dominate financial markets, gold and silver both tend to rapidly rise in price. We witnessed this during the financial crisis, and it's starting to happen again. And because I am the publisher, he writes, of a website called the Economic Collapse Blog, and he is. He's often asked about gold and silver, and he says, when I do interviews, in fact, just a few days ago, I was sitting right next to Jim Richards during a taping of the television show when the topic came up, and he expressed his belief in investing in gold is superior to investing in silver. But I, writes Michael Snyder, had the exact opposite view. And the reason he says is because I, he says to start out, and his wants to disclose that his wife and he are able to put away a bit of silver over the years. Here's what he believes. Um, he says, as I write this article, the price of gold is sitting at 
1254.30 an ounce. Meanwhile, the price of silver is 15.81 an ounce. That means that the price of gold is currently 79 times higher than the price of silver. For the ratio between gold and silver, this is truly unusual. You see, the truth is that there is only about 17 times as much silver on the earth as there is gold in the earth crust. And currently, silver is being mined at a ratio of 11 to 1 to gold. So, he writes, it makes sense that throughout history, gold is typically sold about 15 to 1 the ratio to silver. In other words, not, not to the vast deficit that we're seeing now. He says, during the years to come, he believes gold will multiply in price, but he's also convinced that silver will go up much, much faster. As they both skyrocketed in price, the price ratio between gold and silver will shift very quickly from 79 to 1 in the direction of 15 to 1. Perhaps we may never get all the way to 15 and 1, but even if we got to 40 to 1 or 30 to 1, that would mean silver is history in the making. And this is from Jeff Nielsen. Over the past quarter century, more silver-based patents have been created with any other metal on the planet. But not only does silver have unparalleled versatility, it is extremely potent. So they use it, what he's saying here, in very, very small amounts. And usually it doesn't pay to get the small amounts out of the things that it's used in, like this computer here, for instance. It doesn't pay to get it out. So they throw it away. A lot of the silver has never gotten bad. It's these tiny little slivers that are worth half a penny now, and it would take you four hours to get it out. Gold isn't used that way. So when commodities such as gold and silver go up, silver, and then people will go through their computer and pull the gold out and recycle it. You don't see that with the silver as much. And silver has been greatly devalued. And I thought that was important to say. For those of you that think I'm getting money for saying that I'm sponsored by absolutely nobody whatsoever in the silver industry at all, zero, zip, zilch. So I'm giving it to you because I believe in it, friends. And do you know what that brings us to? There's two of them today. The dumbies of the day. Trey Sanchez, Truth Revolt, J.J. Abrams is getting the uh, first of two dumdies of the day. For those of you that don't know, Dunn's Cap of the Month is coming real soon. So is the April Fool show where all the characters, like Buddy Puff, and all the, all the silly characters I do on Halloween and uh, April Fool's Day will be coming back. Um, J.J. Abrams is a, uh, a bonehead here. My trouble with Abrams is that he, he always takes fantasy just a little bit too far beyond what you could actually believe. I understand the suspension of disbelief and the idea that you need to sometimes separate fact from reality, for instance, when you're in a galaxy far, far away. Boba Fett behind me. Boba Fett's. Well, um, I get that. But, for instance, this isn't spoiling anything. In, in the new Star Wars, there's a scene where the Millennium Falcon is used like a ping pong ball. Boing, boing, like a like pinball, I should say. Bouncing around. Even with shields, there's no way a spaceship could take that much abuse. Abrams tends to go too far, even in the world of fantasy. And as you find out some things about the man who is getting the first of two dumdies of the day today, as you find out about the man, that might be because he's not all that bright of a person in the real world, in this galaxy right here. J.J. Abramson promises to hire fewer straight white men. So you see, it doesn't matter if you're qualified. 
to help him with his story, be it lighting, rigging, writing, acting, producing, directing, ripping, changing the toilet paper on the stool, whatever. You... It doesn't matter if you're qualified for the job. It doesn't matter if you're the best suited and for the job, no. It only matters that you're not a straight white man who happens to have that talent. That means the movies are going to get even dumber because now you see it's, it's not really going to matter so much whether or not you actually have the talent. It's going to matter a lot more that you can like you're not straight and that you can really show up and make it some flash, you know. That's what we're going to be walking into. Uh, I told you, April Fool's Day characters. Um, blockbuster film director J.J. Abrams announced that his production company, Bad Robot, will begin taking steps to broaden its hiring requirements to include the same type of diversity that is represented in America. The trouble with that is, that is nothing at all to do with who is qualified for the job. For instance, this could backfire, and I'll tell you how. If you are an artist, if you are a gay Mexican gentleman, and they have to hire so many of them, what if you, as the hypothetical Mexican gay man who got the job, what if you're working by a gay Korean individual and you know he's an idiot? You know the only reason he hired, they hired that was because he wasn't a gay white man or a straight white man. But you don't really care. Because even as imaginary Joe Gay Mexican, what you care about is the art that you went to school for, that you learned. And you would hope that you got the job because you were good enough for it, not just because you happened to be gay. This is a disaster. What is happening? Are you a movie producer or are you a social justice warrior? And if you're a social justice warrior, then quit making stupid movies. How about that? Speaking to the New York Times reporter on conference held in Half Moon Bay, California, Tuesday night, the Star Wars Force Awakens director said hiring a diverse crew and actors through his company has been a systematic approach. That's why he is vowing to change the hiring policy to include writers, directors, and actors who are more representative of the country that we live in. In other words, he is looking for people who are going to push an agenda, not people who are going to write better screenplay who are going to help him produce and direct and write and create better movies. No, it's all about whether or not you can put another gay man on the screen. <sighs> Again, I don't care if he's gay or straight. Is he talented? That's what I want to know. But no, I guess that's dead. The last of the dumbies of the day here, friends. I'm an immigrant. I, I, I'm not going to do the effing. All right? If you do not want to hear the F word, I respect that, and you need to log off now. Thank you for listening. Hit subscribe. Listen to this. Paul Joseph watched in PrisonPlanet.com. I'm the immigrant fucking your daughter. State-backed Swedish Institute hands control of Twitter account to a Lebanese migrant. The trouble is, we are always told how rare these extremists are. Now here's a dumb D for you. The state-backed Swedish Institute handed control of its official Twitter account over to a Lebanese migrant who then proceeded to tweet that I am the immigrant fucking your daughter while trying while you're trying to sleep, ignoring her moans calling me daddy. Now, it may have been somebody who was just joking. I get it. I have told some pretty perverted, X-rated, inappropriate, probably shouldn't have said it jokes in my life. Trouble is, if this had been a joke, don't you think the man would have immediately claimed it? Did he? Um, no. Billed as the new Swede every week, the Twitter account at Sweden rotates between different individuals 
who tweet about life in Sweden under the umbrella of Curators of Sweden Project. The Swedish Institute, it goes on itself, is partially taxpayer funded. Oh, they got they got paid for it. They paid for this. In which its mission is to promote Sweden and Swedish issues globally. When Elias Creedy was given control of the account, he wasted no time in stroking controversy, tweeting what I just read about above. Uh, Although the tweet was later deleted, Creedy went on to chide Swedes with a number of antagonistic barbs. I am the immigrant who stole your job. I am the immigrant who stole your education. I am the immigrant who will probably employ your poor ass when you'll be looking for a job. He then suggested that Tweeds were racists and were not the original habits of the country. I don't remember all of you racists being Sammy. When someone tweeted that Creedy didn't represent Swedes, Creedy responded by telling them to go back to fucking your sister. Elsewhere, Creedy tells another person to go and fuck yourself, and bringing up Sweden's rape epidemic since it opened its doors to mass immigration, claiming the charge is based on fake racist facts. You can go and fuck yourself before you come with a question containing fake racist facts. Now listen to this. The remarks are particularly crass, but despite the series of controversial sweets, the Swedish Institute, which is getting the second dummy of the day, has not revoked Greedy's access to the account, which has 89,000 followers and will remain in control until March 28th. Now, I bet you if you post my show in the comment line of this rag, please do that. They're going to say you're spamming. I bet you 10 to 1. Who wants to take me up on it? I'll send you $5 if you do it. Uh, do it once. Don't spam. I bet you they say you spam. Uh, first three people. More fun facts about Sweden. Sweden is a country in which some politicians have called for giving free housing, jobs, and welfare to returning ISIS jihadists at the taxpayers' expense, bribing them not to blow the country up. It's a country where the victims of Muslim gang rapes are unsure about whether to report the crime to police because they fear they may offend the rapist. It's a country that hires ISIS sympathizers to run immigration boards. The country's taxpayer-funded expert on his lobbyophobia went on to join ISIS. That was uh, Michael Nicolai Scuramo. And as we reported earlier this year, Swedish bishop in Stockholm proposed removing crosses from the Christian church and replacing them with Islamic symbols. He catered to the Muslims. And Sweden is a country <coughs> in which prominent Swedish officials, or politicians, I should say, are charged with hate crimes for paying attention to the very issues I just told you about. So what do you do, friends? Well, you remember... To share the video. You remember to tell people what you've taught. You remember to contact the Swedish Institute and let them know that they're idiots. Um, remember to donate to the show if you can. The correct views of hotmail.com. I'll let you know where to send any donations you want to give me, and every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. How about that? I appreciate it. Um, remember, it's brought to you by Change Transportation. If you want to ride somewhere, I guarantee they're probably going to give you a better deal than you were going to get. Especially when you let them know, say, hey, tell Kenny, I heard about this on the correct views. Don't I get a discount? And they're going to say you do. That's what they're going to say. Good night, friends. God bless.